absolutely. Sounds good. Okay, so I wanted to get started asking about the whole development of the documentary, what really interested you both in getting the film started, and what was that process like of just really getting the process started on the film? Absolutely, and thanks again for having us uh, on your show today. Um, so Balloon Man, really for me, uh, I when I first graduated from Howard University, I studied television production with a minor in uh, business administration. And, um, you know, I, I, when I started my production company, I was just filming any and everything I could, I was filming. And so I, the idea came, um, my dad is such a good storyteller. Um, and, you know, since I was born, I just remember him telling me different stories uh, about different aspects of his life. And so I said, dad, hey, let me, let me film, let me film you. <laughs> so, um, you know, I got my camera out and, and these were in the, the, the first few years of filming this project. And I would just follow him up and down the East Coast, um, filming at different balloon festivals. Um, and then it kind of unraveled. I'm like, well, maybe I can make this into something bigger. Um, so I decided that I wanted to do a documentary and that's when, you know, I really started recruiting other people to come on. Um, you know, I got a, uh, a DP and we started, you know, just filming different interviews with family members, friends, crew members, um, experts in ballooning. Um, and the project kind of unraveled from there. So it's a completely different project from how I initially envisioned it. I didn't even realize it was gonna be a documentary at that time. Um, and then over the years, it just became into, you know, turned into something, something that I never would have expected, so. And then, um, like you mentioned also, getting people to come on and really speak about just the whole subject of ballooning and um, the dynamic between maybe their experiences in the field and with other people who also partake in ballooning as well. And I wanted to ask you both about that experience of having other people come on board the documentary and really figuring out what you wanted to discuss with them as well overall. Well, yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, once we started getting a, a crew together, um, I mean, people were energized by the project. Um, my father, I mean, he's not only a hot air balloon pilot, but he's done so many other things within his life, you know, from playing professional football with the Buffalo Bills. You know, he now has a traveling um, Black history exhibit called the Cost and Cultural Ex Exhibition. And um, so people were really just energized to be, you know, a part of the project. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of um, bringing on some of the most talented individuals from, you know, our DP to, to, you know, Greg Jones, who did the titles within the film, our colorist, Harry, um, Harry Locke IV, um, Mike Taylor's our DP, we got a producer, Capella for whom, um, you know, we, we got some really talented um, guys to do the original uh, score for the, for the project. So we were all really just energized by each other. And it, it's wonderful when you can kind of, you know, get in a room with other people and your creative <laughs> vibrations are just vibrating off of the walls. So, I mean, it was a fun project and, and I love working with my father throughout this. He's the most organized individual <laughs> you'll ever meet. So, I, I mean, I say he started this project for me back in the 50s when he took his first photograph on his camera. And, you know, when he grabbed his father's super eight millimeter camera in the 60s and filmed Martin Luther King's funeral procession. So he had just this entire collection of photographs, of video, of stock, you know, of footage. So we didn't have to use much stock footage because mm -hmm. most story he captured, you know, growing up, you know, he took that that same camera to college with him. So we have a lot of great um, footage in the film. And then we just paired that with our current day, you know, interviews and footage that we've captured um, in, in during his ballooning experiences. So it's been it's been really enjoyable. You know, Bill, I also wanted to ask you the same question, what that experience has been like for you, of maybe having people, you know, come on for the film and really getting, um, using that footage you have as well and kind of deciding what you wanted to include in the film in regards to photos you may have had or just getting interviews as well for the film. Okay. A lot of people ask me, um, how did you get into ballooning? 
-hmm. And I never, I never really realized it. My mom died when I was nine years old. And I remember I always used to uh, look up in the sky, you know, her being up there in heaven and everything. And I was always looking up in the sky, but I just never even thought that, you know, I'd get into ballooning. And it wasn't until um, uh, my cousin and uh, his boss, they knocked on my door one day. They said, uh, let's start a balloon club. I said, what's a balloon? <laughs> So <laughs> they started telling me about this balloon and everything, what it did. And I saw the advertising um, portion of it because there was a big Budweiser sign on the, on the side of the balloon. And so I was trying to figure out um, how could I get a sponsor to um, buy my balloon, you know, for free. And I hooked up with the dealer of uh, the distributor of Raven Industries Inc. And he's, he, recognized my background as a pro football player. So he said, well, how would you like to be on a professional racing circuit? I said, well said. And he said, we can go all over the country. We can get uh, different companies to uh, advertise on the balloon and, and we'll race all over the country. I said, that sounds cool. So um, I was able to get my first balloon and uh, I started, uh, once I got my actual licenses, I was able to fly with some of the, the um, greatest pilots in the world. And by doing that, I was, I was actually forced to do things way beyond my actual limits. So I learned quickly to um, be safe and to um, um, not kill myself up in a balloon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I also wanted to ask you both about serving as producers on the film as well, and what that experience was like for you both to really serve as producers as well. Producing together on this film? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I thought, you, <laughs> my father, you know, he's he's done many things and, and filmmaking wasn't one of them, but I thought he was the perfect person to work with, um, simply because um, really his organization, you know, I could call him at two in the morning, like, hey, I need this, do you have this? And within minutes, he would send me exactly what I asked for. That's how organized and, and quick he mm -hmm. is. And so, um, and just resources, you know, what, what do you think about this? Who do you think would be good to speak on this topic? And he would just come up with names and we'd reach out to them. And, you know, if they, if they found interest in the project, they, they were, became a part of it. So, you know, working with him has been just a wonderful experience. I think it's made us closer, you know, as a father and daughter, but, um, you know, people ask me all the time, was it difficult working with him? You know, not at all. It was, it was such a delight working with him. And then when it came down to cutting the film, um, I mean, this, the first cut was about three hours long <laughs> and I was married to everything within it. But, um, you know, we, we, I did the first cut of the film and then I had to send it off to an editor who didn't know my father. Yeah, I had met him a few times in passing. So he, he didn't know our story. And I said, just cut whatever, whatever you think doesn't, you know, matter, whatever you, you don't think the audience would resonate with, just cut it. And, you know, he cut and I, and I really like how the, the film uh, panned out. So, you know, it was wonderful producing with my dad on this project. Mm -hmm. You know, you, um, Bill, as you as well, I also wanted to ask you about that experience for you producing the film as well. Well, it was easy working with my daughter because uh, she was daddy's little girl mm -hmm. from, from a baby. And she started uh, flying in the balloon actually when she was a baby, both her and my son. Uh, so, you know, I was working closely with them all my life and all their lives. And, um, you know, they came to all my different um, festivals and different jobs that I had. One time, it was a good story. One time, um, my wife and I couldn't get a babysitter that day. So we had to put an advertising balloon up on top of a mall. And um, we had to go up through the ladder through the roof. So Chantel was only about one year old, maybe, maybe a year and a half. And my son was about three. So we had to lift Chantel in her car seat up mm -hmm. through the roof. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had to lift all the balloon equipment up through the that ladder up through the roof. 
And once we got up on the roof, there was 10 um, uh, um, workers on the roof with hard hats. Mm -hmm. And they looked over there and saw <laughs> a family of uh, mm -hmm. four uh, in the snow. It was snowing that day, walking across the roof, dragging a balloon, dragging a mm -hmm. car seat. And they just, they just looked and just couldn't believe it. <laughs> so all, all Chantel's life, we've had experiences like that. And we were just able to meet a lot of different people over the years, uh, different families at different um, um, festivals. So we were able just to have fun her whole life. Mm -hmm. Also, um, speaking about the editing, I also wanted to ask about that experience as well and what that process was like of getting the final version of the film together as well. Oh yeah, well, um, you know, as I mentioned, the, the film, the first cut was pretty long <laughs> and you know, you know, there were interviews, it was, there were a lot of more, there were more family interviews in that first um, version, um, but speaking to different individuals and my fiscal sponsor, which is Documentary Educational Resources, um, they, they watched a cut of the film and gave some feedback as well. Um, we had a screening in Atlanta, it was a family and friends screening, um, and you know, I passed out paper with 20 questions on it. What did you love about the film? What did you hate? You know, and we got some really great feedback um, from that. So you know, even though I thought it was almost done at that moment, once I got that feedback, I'm saying, okay, I'm incorporating this into. Uh, you know, I, I took bits and pieces here, and if there was something that you know was a trend among many of the responses. Um, I, I took a look at that in, in the film. And I worked with Roy Heisler. Um, he's a wonderful editor uh, and passed the project along to him and he cut away and I gave him all the feedback. And so, yeah, that was really the process of uh, getting the film to where it is now. I also wanted to ask you um, about directing the film as well and what that experience was like for you really editing and producing and directing and just getting the film together as the director in particular. Right, well, you know, this is my first uh, feature debut. I've done several mm -hmm. short films. I've done several short documentaries, um, you know, working for Black Entertainment. I used to do a lot of short form uh, documentaries and news stories, uh, short documentary on Nelson Mandela. So, you know, I've had a lot of experience on short form projects. But this was my this is my first feature, um, and you know, bringing that from <laughs> pre-production now to distribution, we're working with Gravitas Ventures, um, who's distributing the film. It will be out. Um, you know, we have a worldwide deal uh, February second um, on VOD platforms. It will be on uh, Comcast, Verizon, FiOS. Um, so you know, working with them and and, and getting it through distribution has been such a challenge. You know, I actually had a conversation with a classmate last night. Um, he, he, we went to Howard together and he was in production and he's doing a documentary himself. And we talked for about an hour and I'm like, I wish I would have had all this information when I started this project, cause it would have saved so much money, so much time. Um, and, and I've had some wonderful people, um, you know, Capella, Harry, uh, consult me along the way. And so certain things that I didn't know I needed, e &O insurance, you know, certain legal things that I needed to get in order to deliver the film, which is a whole nother process. <laughs> Delivering a film is such a beast. Um, but, you know, it's been such a, it's been such a learning experience. And, um, you know, I'm happy that I'm at this point. And now we're marketing the film, you know, doing PR. And that's the other half of filmmaking. You know, you make a good film, but if no one sees it, it doesn't matter. So, you know, just trying to find creative ways, especially in 2020, 2021, um, since COVID, you know, going to film festivals, I, I imagine this completely different <laughs> than how it actually panned out. I used to go to the Cannes Film Festival every single year. So I, I know that territory, I know that terrain. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, 
as soon as this film is done, you know, I'm it here. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, possibly have a screening and set meetings, but it wasn't like that this year. You know, we did a few film festivals and um, well, the one that we did in Con France, it was the Pan-African Film Festival. They went ahead and did that one in person, um, but the rest of them were pretty much um, online. They use the online virtual platform. So it's been very different, um, even, you know, trying to connect with distributors uh, online. <laughs> you know, you have to get really creative this year, but I think, you know, God is on my side and things have been panning out beautifully and I, I couldn't ask for, for more. <laughs> and speaking of the di digital distribution, I also want to, I was actually about to ask about that and I'm um, following up on that last response. I also wanted to see um, what the experience has been like for you both and really getting to maybe hear feedback from audiences online who are looking forward to seeing the film and just doing those festivals and um, the virtual route as well and what that experience was like of maybe connecting with audiences um, in particular virtually as well. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's been so interesting doing the festivals online because I'm, so, I'm so used to being there in person. I'm so used to that experience. But I think the entire industry was learning together. You know, we were hit with this and, and together film festival curators, they had to move to a digital platform. And, you know, since I, I've done some amazing workshops at, at various film festivals and some of them are like, you know, this is kind of the way to, to go. We've reached audiences that we would have never reached before had, had uh, you know, it not moved to an online platform. So people are looking at doing more of a hybrid in the future where people, you know, can come in person, but there there's also an online aspect, um, but it's, it's, we haven't been able to connect with as many people as I an initially imagined, but we've received some wonderful feedback from um, individuals that have attended the festivals online um, that were able to view the film. Um, one festival in particular, um, the Rhode Island Black Film Festival, um, that turned into another opportunity um, where we were going to have a screening at the Waterfire Center, like a drive-in screening which wasn't related at all to the festival, but it came out of you know being a part of that festival where we actually won film of the year. Um, unfortunately, the first snowfall of the entire <laughs> year mm -hmm. happened that weekend. So they had to cancel due to the weather, but hopefully you know, they'll reschedule that screening and, and uh, folks up in the New England area can go check out the film. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's been, it's been wonderful. We've just pivoted and, and found new ways to do things. Mm -hmm. And um, Bill, I also wanted to ask you now that the film is coming out, have you um, received any feedback from audiences and how have people maybe reached out to you or maybe expressed their interest in ballooning and their thoughts about the film and have you had any contact with audiences as well? Yeah, I do a lot of um, work on Facebook because I've been marketing the film from my Facebook uh, family. Uh, I probably have over 20,000 followers. And um, as, I've, uh, uh, as we've known that the film is uh, gonna be produced, I've been uh, reaching out to all the people um, that I've flown with. One of the uh, Facebook, um, 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 one of the Facebook, um, one of the Facebooks is, is a, a group just of balloonists and all of them has a, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? We can't wait to see it until it comes out. And so we try to get it distributed right now. So I've been, I've been getting all that feedback, you know, hurry up, we wanna see it, we wanna see it. Where can we see it? How can we see it? Right. I don't know. I don't know. You mm -hmm. have to talk to my daughter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been getting a lot of feedback like that. But um, people understand. I mean, you know, some people who've, um, there's a couple of people who've uh, done sim not, not similar documentaries, but I've seen one little film on a, on a balloon uh, film. But a lot of my um, followers, they know my background, you know, ever since I've been into, um, trying to capture black history for people who don't really know about black history like I didn't know. I've, I've developed a lot of followers through that. 
So um, as I've uh, done my costume culture exhibition, you know, I've had a lot of people there saying, oh yeah, I heard about your Balloon Man film. When is it coming out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know well, we know now, February 2nd. <laughs> Please, we're, we're urging people to, um, you know, pre-purchase the film on Apple TV, iTunes, um, and it will be available, Comcast, Verizon Fios, um, all the VOD platforms, um, you'll be able to see it beginning February 2nd. And, and I also have to say, you know, audiences, when they look at the poster, when they look at the film, they hear Balloon Man, it's kind of intriguing. It's like, well, what kind of balloon is it? Is it? Is he a, does he blow up helium balloons? Is he a party <laughs> balloon guy? Um, but then, you know, when you find out that it's about hot air ballooning, hot air ballooning is a niche sport. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to um, let audiences know that it's about my father. It's about his life, his journey, getting into hot air ballooning. So he, he did so many other things and there are so many other themes within this film that I wanted to highlight. So what I'm really doing right now is a, um, a series. It's gonna be it's four panel discussions, virtual panel discussions that we are launching two weeks um, prior to the February 2nd release. And so one is on um, life after pro sports. You know, once the jerseys are retired, what now? How do you prepare for something that has defined you for so long? Um, one is uh, called Knowledge is Power, really on um, Black history. Um, and, you know, we have some really great panelists on that one talking about the importance of Black history. There's actually a new bill in Connecticut mandating um, Black history be included in their curriculum by 2022. So we have uh, Senator Douglas McCrory on that panel talking about that initiative. Um, the third panel is ballooning is for blank. And I sit down with some of the world's uh, most fascinating pilots and they fill in the blank for us um, and talk about their experiences, some of the challenges that they may have had um, in ballooning. And then the last one is kind of like a daddy daughter panel, um, just women really in entertainment that have been heavily influenced by their fathers, like, like myself. <laughs> um, you know, I went to Howard University just because of all the stories that my dad had of his experience at Morris Brown. So um, these panels, you know, if, even if you don't really care about ballooning, there's so many other themes that you may be able to resonate with. Um, so, you know, we're dropping those two weeks leading up on the Balloon Man website. So please look out for that. You know, we have some wonderful conversations with some wonderful influencers, experts, and friends. So. Now that this um, film is being released in a few weeks, I also wanted to ask about what's coming up next for you both. Um, are you interested in working together in another film? And do you have any ideas or just what's coming up next for you? Oh, yes. Well, absolutely. That's the question that always everyone always asks, like, oh, this project is great. But what, what do you have? What else do you have going on? Um, so, yes, I'm working on a, a short film next uh, animated film. So we're in um, pre-production with that. Um, and I really want to do a narrative, a feature narrative as well. So um, simultaneously, I'm working on both of those projects. So definitely in 2021, look out for, uh, well, the narrative won't be shot in 2021, but I'm looking to have the short animation um, completed in 2021. Okay, I think that was me later, but thank you to um, both of you for taking the time out today. I appreciate it. No, thank you so thank much you. for having us. We thank appreciate you. it. You're welcome. Thank you again.